Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. Local Chat 101 here to tell you about all the things you should learn in college. That's right, folks. This week, joining us, Professor Ian himself. First lesson, it's pronounced collage. Perfect. And joining us, adjunct Professor Kyle. I've got the glasses to prove it. These are adjunct professor glasses, so oh I'm gosh. ready to what go. What does adjunct mean? I just know I was, that from... I'm, I was <laughs> literally going to Google that immediately. Uh, what's there, is isn't it someone who's also also taking classes? Or uh... No, I think that's, a, I think that's a, not a that's TA, like a TA, but like a, that's like a grad. Okay, wait, I got it. Adjunct professor is the type of academic appointment in higher education who does not work at the establishment full time. So it's a part time instructor, faculty, lecturer, etc. Okay, so there, I'll, I'll buy that. So it's so I think it goes tenured, normal professor, and then like an adjunct, and then substitute. You ever think about how weird like tenureship <laughs> <Airline> is? <food> is. <laughs> tenureship oh, is just like, yeah, I I guess we're ready to commit at a higher level, and like, I, it's like it, I think it gives you like protections where you like it's much harder for you to be fired and you're like guaranteed a spot by default as opposed to getting rolled off the staff. Just a weird concept. I'm not against it. I just it. know it's a thing that people yell about. I had tenure and like stuff in movies. Um, but at this point I was too scared to ask. Um, it's just like, I feel like in both other, most other industries, it's like six months. Like you have a six months probation period and then you're basically tenured where they're like, look, we can't fire you at random on a random day unless it's like a mass layoff or whatever, et cetera. And in, in the academic industry, again, talking out of my ass here, it's like you have to work your ass off for 10 to 15 years and do all this shit to get the same level of protection everybody else gets after six months on the job. <laughs> Just a yeah. weird concept. Listen, anyway, is perfect and I will take no slander. Um, brought to you by the liars department folks we're here to talk about video games and all sorts of things video games this is our this is our official holiday themed episode uh, if you ask about the holidays outside of this episode uh we will kill you yeah you know, i was just Ian, thinking Ian has a knife. we were talking earlier about how the news is very light this week because it is the holidays and last year we didn't have that problem but the problem we did have was that we did didn't we do we did a we, one week we did the year in review and then the oh, next yeah. week we did <laughs> the next year. And then the next week we did like game of the year. So we did like three stupid <laughs> episodes in a row. So this year we're trying not to do that, yeah. but we don't have enough ga news content. So I think we just tried this normal episode format around the holidays, even though there's not a lot of news and see what happens. You know, I'm pretty sure I also um, put in all three of those episodes giveaways at the end and no one ever <laughs> sent me a message to so those giveaways are probably oh. still there if someone wants to claim them. <laughs> For inscription, I believe. It was like... Yeah. It was inscription yeah. and then something else on one of the episodes. So, if, holy yeah. shit, go, go nab those. There were code words. Yeah. Um, no, we're here to talk about video games and our holiday gaming plans. Um, what Do you, do you guys want to do the gaming plan or holiday plans first or go through what we've been playing first? Let's go through what we've been playing first, and then we come back to the plans. Yeah, because then what we've been playing might tie into our plans, and then you don't have to yes. re-explain yourself. Okay, so I'm going to go first, because I'm more important than all of you. Um, I have been playing Fallout New Vegas more. I'm on the final DLC. Uh, it's actually the first DLC, but I somehow played it last. Um, that game's still great, and I love it, uh, and it's, it's a great time. You uh, haven't beaten this game yet. No, I'm... 56 hours in and I, I haven't even I don't care about your hour count you're like you're like week eight of this game <laughs> I'm like week a thousand of this game uh, which I'm playing uh, you it. know it took me it took me like six or seven weeks to beat Dyson Sphere program but granted at the end of it I had like 80 or 90 hours so that's true I play it, like play maybe, the game <laughs> I play like four hours a week and then sometimes I play like eight hours maybe I feel like that's it's pretty just decent like, though it's just yeah it's just like a comfort game so you know like it's just I, I think hang out for a bit and play it like when you put it that way that's reasonable i think what's crazy is that that is not the way to play that game and i don't mean that judgmental but like there are games that you binge and yeah. there are games that you take slow and i never thought of new vegas as a game to take slow that's the type of game where you're just like i'm playing fucking four hours a day because well, i because i'm yeah i should it. say like those 
it's never like it's like one long session that I'm playing it a week. And also, That's like, I still, try to yeah. do all the quests at the same time, like group them. Yeah, Anyways. it's just kind of weird because because for me personally, if I went that far, game like that, if I went far be that far between plays, I would just drop it at some point. It's not like the type of game where I would come back to it like that so it's just it's just curious to hear that's how you're experiencing it oh yeah i'm already planning because i can pull my save off the xbox and put it on the pc so i can play some of the mod campaigns that people have released and then i might just start fallout 3 separate or there's a mod that joins the two worlds of vegas oh man fallout, fallout 3. 3 is pretty cool fallout, you can't i don't think you have you played fallout 3 fallout 3 is my favorite fallout I love Fallout 3. Better than New Vegas. It's not a better game than New Vegas, but it's my favorite Fallout game. I, I can see that, yeah. Because, like, I, I like th 3 to New Vegas was fantastic because 3 was like, this is very interesting. They're doing some cool stuff here. And if you're not familiar with, like, Oblivion, etc., then, like, it's a really fresh thing to you. And then New Vegas is like, yeah, what if we did that, but we, like, upped the quest, upped the story, upped everything oh, about totally. it. I have so, a soft spot. Man, going for... back, I couldn't imagine. I have a soft spot for the Oblivion, Fallout 3, New Vegas, Skyrim to some extent engine. Like that yeah. look and feel, I just really enjoy. Um, but yeah, Fallout 3, I think I have like 180 hours in on the 360 version. Like I played that so much. Um, so yeah, the New Vegas update, I won't update anymore until I finally beat it. And then I can tell everyone Good. that I beat it. Uh, I've also played a little bit of High on Life. Uh, it is oh. currently uninstalled. Um, I had to play. Oh, it okay, wait. What's your opinion on Rick and Morty? I watched the first two seasons of Rick and Morty, and I'm not against watching more of it. I just haven't. Okay, that's fair. Because that that's like that is the baseline going into High on Life. Is what's your opinion on Rick and Morty? Yeah, uh, I I haven't I haven't felt an impetus to catch up. But if it was like, hey, let's watch all of Rick and Morty, I'd be like, okay, sure. Um, I, so I, I thought the opening of this game was very fun and neat. <laughs> oh. God, that opening, like, like I, I don't mean to take over, but like I was on the fence about playing this game because it showed okay, it showed good and bad. There was a lot of negative with the, yeah. the pre-release stuff and then people started picking it up and they were like you know what there's actually something really funny here and fuck the haters i'm enjoying this and people being like i expected to hate this and i'm actually really enjoying it so i went into it not being sure and within like the first three minutes i'm like fuck there's something very good here in parts that i am excited to enjoy um should we just spoil a little bit about the intro i mean it's the tutorial section yeah it's an, it's nothing crazy it's just i mean you you're playing a different video game and then it like zooms out when you're like sister yeah. trying to get your attention and then it shows that you're at a computer monitor which you but know that like, going in you know you're clearly yeah. not playing the game that was advertised to you because it's but, it's like it's like a doom like literally a doom style first yeah, person shooter like with flat sprites doom and the narrator <laughs> who's talking to you is your ex, is your ex-wife is your divorce lawyer or divorce yeah. attorney and he's just like so he keeps talking being like, to you he keeps being like he keeps being like hey it's rick your divorce attorney you gotta go for you gotta press the arrow keys to go forward and he's like i love you man why don't you give me a call and then yeah then, so he he like gave, every time he tutorial. talks to you every time he talks to you though he says hey it's rick your divorce attorney he's like by the way the bad guys they're your your uh, ex-wife's uh many boyfriends it's really weird okay just uh shoot him <laughs> and it's and just it's like, like hey remember me you're <laughs> love rick, it. your divorce lawyer. <laughs> um <laughs> very good so like he talks you through this but my favorite part of it is you're like running and he's like okay come on up here we're gonna show you the mid-air jump mid-air jump and you jump and then it's like hit spacebar again and you hit spacebar again and you don't go anywhere you fall and he goes ah shit the developers didn't put the mid-air jump in we uh we got the crouch though make sure you crouch so like yeah i don't know why it like wasn't that hilarious of a joke but it just caught me off guard to like i hit the spacebar and then my character was falling and i was like how did i f up this mid-air jump already <laughs> and then you fall and he's just like yeah there is no mid-air jump so that was interesting and then you're Sister knocks on the door and it plays like a very convincing knocking sound uh, out of the right speaker. And I have a door right here and I thought someone was knocking on it. I was like, oh my God. Um, 
So then you get into the game proper, story stuff happens. Um, I played maybe two hours of this game. One of those hours was standing still for an hour because there's a section of the game that asks you to stand still for an hour and I needed to record that. Um, so the oh, one hour I played, yeah. um, I honestly didn't hate it. There were some annoying characters and some annoying stuff, but a couple of the jokes made me laugh. Um, a, just like the the chaos of the game was pretty funny. Like I didn't find, like I said, I didn't find everything funny, but it wasn't overbearing until like you have the gun and you're like just trying to walk around shooting things and the gun starts talking a lot so you can now change that up you can go to the settings and adjust how often the guns talk and everything but um it it's definitely wasn't an onslaught of like constant justin roiland voice um everywhere you're going it's the same type of comedy over and over again which is justin yeah. roiland improving into a mic and being like ah it's me the mac and cheese brothers don't come over here it's the it's, the, it's me and it's like if you don't find that funny, you won't find this funny. I don't find it that funny, but I like improv comedy. So just knowing he's improving to me makes it a little bit funnier because it's like, oh, you're just coming up with stuff. What funny thing are you going to say? But then when it gets overly vulgar, I'm like back out of it. I'm like, don't compensate with that stuff. So I'm not going to continue playing it, but I didn't hate hate how far I got into it. Yeah, I, I may continue to play it. I got a, I got past the first boss fight. Um, because the super I, secret boss after the first boss fight. I don't know because I I I I think I kind of know what you mean, but I I didn't do that. Uh <laughs> but there's like there's like a seven out of ten. I feel like this game is a solid seven, totally. but it's because the combat is not is is kind of very vanilla and it doesn't quite feel right. It feels like it's missing like a third of the feel. So like the shooting doesn't feel great, etc. but it's not terrible. So the shooting's like a five or a six, but like the world and the story that it's telling and the humor makes it like, like closer to like an eight, maybe even a nine. Mm -hmm. Some of the bits are very good. So it's one of those sevens where it's not just boring all the way through. It's got highs and lows. Um, yeah. But honestly, the, the problem is this was a good time for them to come out in a way in terms of the release year, because they're definitely getting buzz. But for me, like we got game of the year coming up, so I'm trying to catch up. I've got holiday stuff going on. Dwarf Fortress just hit. Uh, Sports Story uh, is still supposed to come out. I realized that today, December. and I'm like, I was like, so so it's one of those things where I'm like, this game's cool, and I would love to play it more, but I got to be in the mood. I'm not sure I have time right now to keep playing it. Um, but I I would say, look, it's on Game Pass. If you are at all interested, check it out because it's very. I don't want to say. I don't want to say inoffensive, but it's easy to check if you're going to enjoy that sense of humor because it throws it in your face right away. Mm -hmm. And that sense of gameplay and style that the game is going for, like the self-referential self -referential humor and all that. And if you're enjoying it, then, yeah, just keep playing it, man. Game Pass. Game Pass makes it so easy to try these things. It makes it easy for, for developers to, to try making these things. It makes it easy for you to try playing them. So... There's something here that is better than I think what a lot of people expected because it's very cool to shit on Rick and Morty now and it deserves some of that shit. But <laughs> uh, this game got a lot piled onto it, so it's nice to see it actually fight for some of its own relevance and you know positive reaction. Yeah, uh, Kyle, do you have uh, opinions on Rick and Morty? Uh, I've seen the first, I think, two seasons like you have. I liked it. I mean, it was not the most groundbreaking show in the world. I actually prefer Solar Opposites to Rick and Morty. Um, mm. I don't know if you guys watch Solar Opposites, but it's it's great. Um, and that's just Justin Royal and Dan Harmon, I don't think, is involved um, other than doing some voices. So I like Justin Royland. Like, I, I mean, his his comedy is not 100 percent, but no comedian's comedy is 100 percent. So, yeah, uh, I can appreciate it. And the game looked interesting. I, I liked what I saw from the trailer. Um, and I, I tend to stick away from a lot of the people who just hate on people for the sake of hating on them so i'm trying to go into it with an open mind and you know the fact that it's on game pass i can just download it and check it out yeah. so i'm excited yeah yeah definitely check it out i like ian said it's a competent seven or eight out of ten game depending yeah. on how much you like that comedy um and just the sheer rant like at one point you walk back into the house and there's just a full length '90s movie that you can sit down and watch, <laughs> and it's a uh, real '90s movie. It's, and it's a it's real insane. with Denise Richards and Paul Walker. It's just playing <laughs> on the TV. Um, I know um, Red Letter Media has like a cameo in there where they actually do like yeah. a mystery science theater 
three thousand oh, sort of thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, that I think I think they may voice. <laughs> I think I heard somebody say they may voice some of the guns as well, but I'm not sure about that. Yeah, um, yeah, I, but yeah, I, they, they have a lot of cool cameos and stuff. Oh, I should have checked. I didn't see a credit. I had to check IMDb for a thing to see who was actually in it, and they were listed, but it didn't say their characters. Mm-hmm. But the um. Some of the guns, there was J.B. Smoove and, um, God, it was the other semi-famous person. Oh, uh, Tim Robinson from I Think You Should Oh. He was one of the guns, and his was I haven't really funny. Yet. He's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, these are my kids. It's so great to be a father for half a second, and then the depression hits. Because, like, the kids, like, they, like, run out and explode or something. <laughs> it's like, I got a million of these fuckers. I was like, "Yep, that's Tim <laughs> Robinson." Totally. <laughs> is there 100%. is there like a is there like a burst round sort of thing on that gun? He can say triples his best, triples <laughs> his best. I just want sloppy steaks right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, gosh. Uh, and then finally, actually, quick insert. Um, I played a little more of Warhammer 40k Dark Tide. Not enough to have a segment on this show, but I made a new character and I made him the big biggest guy with the giant yeah. with the big shotgun and everything. Way more fun than the sharpshooter. Like oh, really man. miles more fun. Uh, I had an absolute blast. And when you make a new character, you can skip the prologue, uh, which nice. is fantastic. Nice. Um, so Karen and I have been playing that a little bit more. Um, I know Chris over at Saved It really enjoys it, so I I want to try to play. It was that on, honestly I had a really good time when we played. And yeah. if you're saying if we can switch up, maybe we can do what is what is that character type? Is it just like, like an a tank? Ogrunt, ogrunt, okay, ogrunt or something. We can do like a quad ogrunt squad yeah, or something I'd like that. Down. That'd be fun. Totally. Um, yeah, it was much more like melee first, and I have a shotgun rather than like. The other one who was trying to be more uh, shooty shooty yeah. Movie, tooty. Yeah. Uh, moving on. Finally, Dwarf Fortress. My sweet summer child. I played so much yesterday and today. Um, I have found a giant underground cavern that I am now... It was all muddy waters or muddy surface, so I'm setting up farms down there. I walled off a section because I saw cave spiders. Um, I had a dwarven child get into a strange mood. And then I don't know if I didn't check the right menu, but I thought they were doing okay. And then they went insane and started attacking the woodcutter and the woodcutter <laughs> lopped their head off. Jeez. Um, I have a negative one years old newborn baby who walks around. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know what their deal is. Um, and then a minotaur attacked. Um, and I had as, my military squad decimate it uh and now this entire thing from the from the child well the child i didn't bury so a ghost of the child came back so that was then beating up other children in my fortress (laughs) um so now after so that happened and then the minotaur attack happened and killed a couple people because they couldn't get inside fast enough so I am now making a memorial floor of my uh, <laughs> my fortress, uh, which spans from I think twenty eight to negative ten is my current height. Wow! Um, not every floor is obviously taken, but um, I have seventy two dwarves. I'm denying every bard who asks to join because I have so the- <laughs> too many. I have an expansive. It's gotta be. It's gotta be a bug, right? Because has- my fortress is at seventy nine people, and I think thirty of them are entertainers. I, I got two migrant waves, like I think within the same year, or it must have been just so close. I had thirty in one and twenty in the other. Jeez, um, Louise! Absolutely crazy. I have a huge tavern that I just added a whole new dining hall to because. The entire tavern screen is just blinking people. It's full. Yeah, yeah. Everyone yeah. goes to the tavern. Um, I had yeah. a cult who believes in disease and blight asked to build a, a temple for them. So I have a full temple for them with a priest. Uh, and they're having a fun nice. time. Um, <laughs> it is just a wild video game that is crazy and fun. 
and I'm having I'm having such a good time with it. It's hey, we didn't good. talk about this last time, but this is going on the game of the year nominee list. Like clearly, oh, it's a hundred percent going on there. So y'all better be prepared to play it. We're talking about the Steam version, uh, of course. Okay, because the, the, yeah. as long as it's the updated version with with sprites oh. and stuff. So. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, Steam version you can just actually you can they just uh, today <laughs> yeah. the update you can switch the tile back. set back to classic mode, but Which have modern you don't controls. Do. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, they added just enough convenience to the game to make it much easier to get, what make it a little bit easier for you to understand what's going on. Yes. And and now the and honestly now that you can at least read the screen and click things, it has made getting into the game a lot easier. There's still some weird rules and ob- obfuscations and stuff like that, but it's less obtusive because now you can literally see the game. Mm. Yeah. It is. Um. Yeah. There's some glaring issues which are things they're not uh, they are aware of but they wanted to get it out this year in order to make some money um and so like there's stuff like you there's like, not an easy way to access reports if you want to look up stuff that has already happened there's um there's something else that i had to look up to see if i could do it and you can't um you know what regardless... i can't figure out how to do is wall engravings because there's the one button for floor and wall but if i click a floor it does it if i click a wall nothing happens i don't understand it so a wall has to be um a constructed wall no 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 uh, it has to be smooth first before you can engrave it okay all right i'll try that out um that'll that confused me as well because i kept trying to engrave or fortify a wall and it wasn't smooth first um gotcha so yeah, I, I'm having a blast with it. It's super fun. I, I highly recommend it if you like any sort of city builder or life sim. Like you can't directly interact with dwarves, uh, and that shakes it up a lot. You can't can't force things to happen. Um, you can't get everyone back inside before the Minotaur rips their heads off. Um, yes. That Minotaur dropped like a legendary loot and like a book of forgotten beasts. Hell yeah! <laughs> I'm like, oh god. What I keep I finding weird. This? I keep finding weird books and scrolls just littered around my fortress. Like people, people are just them dropping up, read them, them and drop them. So you need to. I forget what you do. You can assign like a library as like yeah, like a library or something. I should set that up. I've had um, actually I got my first mayor. You, I, I had yeah, I just got mine mayor. too. And so I, he was mayor. like, "Hey, this noble room you built for me, piece of shit." It's <laughs> like. <laughs> He's like, I need decent quarters. I need a tomb. I need decent studying. And I was like, I'll just make... I had so much okay. platinum. I was like, I'll just make everything out of platinum. What do you want? <laughs> um, we should uh, we should talk about, though, about what happened on Dwarf Boys. Because... Uh, so... Okay. Look, here's what happened. We had a fortress. We embarked. Uh, it told <laughs> us there was a river next to the embark, embark spot, and you need river for fresh water. We took a look at it. There was and a there river. was no there was no river. It was just frozen over, and we were like, I was like, ah, I don't know. And Will's like, ah, I don't know. It'll be fine. It'll and it was winter, and it'll thaw out. And we were like, okay, so it thawed out, and uh, like I knew this was going to be bad, and that's why like last stream I was like, hey. Like, you know, two hours into this save, I'm like, hey, we should make a well because I still don't like that there's this river. It's shallow and it freezes over in winter. And we're like, okay, so we start making the well. We get like confused with the design. We actually get to a point where the well is the well is basically ready and we just have to fill it with water and we go back to the river and it turns out the river dries out in the autumn before freezing over in the winter (laughs) And long story short, middle early winter, our <laughs> fortress of nineteen people, they just all slowly die of dehydration because there is no water. <laughs> so our first fortress, roaring success. But I, I, I think the lesson from there is number one, wells are very important because you can't trust standing water. And number two, if you have a bad feeling, you need to do whatever you can to satisfy that bad feeling. Because we both looked at it and we're like, uh, I don't know about this, but I, <laughs> okay. let's see what happens. And then we were like, should have paid more attention because we just yeah. dehydrated 19 dwarfs. This so insane. does just, this is coming from someone who has never touched Dwarf Fortress. Is there maybe not a tutorial, but does it help you in any way or is it does it basically just drop you in? There's a tutorial that you can play through that gets you pretty well set up. And then up at the top, there's a question mark. So you can click on that and open up screens that are like mini tutorials. Mm-hmm. Um, but your your like biggest thing is like just Googling 
Dwarf Fortress and your problem. Yeah. Plus Steam will sometimes get you a Steam answer. A lot mm. of the stuff from the non-Steam version does carry over, so like ways to do things. Um, but they did change some stuff up for the Steam version. Um, so I'm gonna I'm even, gonna shout out I'm gonna shout out something here that really helped me. There is a Polygon guide called How to Set Up oh. Your First Dwarf Fortress for Success by Jeffrey Parkin. And I went through this and it does a very good job of being like literally like, hey, when you are setting up your world, pick these settings. No aquifers, you know, like minerals should be everywhere. Like it's telling you what settings to pick when you're setting up the world. And then it basically tells you like what to do for the first 10 minutes where it's like literally like open the screen, assign labors. You should set it up like this. This is what it means. So it kind of it's an extra tutorial instead of just being like, hey, you can click this and this happens. It's like you should set it up like this and you should try and do this going forward this is how to set up each of your basic parts of your fortress so yeah. this guy was fantastic for like the first 60 minutes and it gave you like 90 percent of what you needed so game tutorial plus that polygon mm. article really really helps i literally just bookmarked it i'm probably going to use it as when i start so thank you sweet thank you polygon thank you all well, for not hiring me yeah yeah <laughs> fuck uh, you polygon <laughs> fuck yeah except for this article yeah except Still for living you're good. so ian uh, no kidding uh, so yeah, Dwarf Fortress has been super fun. Uh, we've got Dwarf Boys coming back at you. I think tomorrow we're going to try to do it. Um, yeah. At some point. Uh, I'm excited for that. I'm loving it so far. I've got Breath of Fresh Air. Uh, moving on, I'm going to switch over to you, Kyle. Okay. Because you're playing a game I'm extremely excited about. Uh, yes. And I want to hear you talk about it. So I... There was a some sort of a game deal on the trilogy of Hitman, so I, I bought it. It was through Hitman 3, so it like retroactively unlocked the rest of the stuff. I went back, played through Hitman 1. I had already played through Hitman 2, and I'm almost done Hitman 3. I'm at the... Um, uh, I forget what it is. You're in the city. Vineyard. There's like the the underground. Um, oh, like the Hong uh, Kong thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, oh, I couldn't yeah. remember what city it was. That was really cool. It's in the rain. It's very like neon, sort of drenched. Um, very fun. I was not expecting the level that came before that, which was the the investigation level. Oh, uh, so yeah. that's so good i was I, yes. smiling the entire time because i was like are they really gonna let me take the guys of this detective and just <laughs> walk around everywhere pretty much i had so much fun um that level was great i'm really I, it felt like they were it felt like ioi was having fun like developing yeah. like like they weren't just sort of let's continue doing the same thing they were like let's see how we can switch this up which i really appreciated um also it, I mean, I know they basically use the same engine for the entire trilogy, but it looks so good. Like yeah. it, the the amount of detail that is just populating these these levels is insane. Um, I love exploring every little nook and cranny. Um, the even just the random conversations that'll come up between NPCs are like really interesting to listen to, even if they don't have any sort of weight on the rest of the mission or or don't unlock a specific um what method of of getting your your uh, objective completed it's just it makes it feel more real and, and more lived in and i love i love stuff like that so i'm really excited to keep playing it i'm almost done um and one of the reasons that i really wanted to get it done and to finish out this trilogy was because they are obviously going to be developing the new james bond game um mm -hmm. i have a long form video that I'm going to be working on over this Christmas break where I'm going to go through the history of James Bond games, but also try and look forward based on what they've done in the past with James Bond games, but what the Hitman developers have done with the Hitman and see how those two things might coincide. So really, really excited for that. Um, and I'm, I'm just happy to be playing like a good series, a good trilogy of games that feels so tightly wound and, and really well made. Um, so that's Hitman 3. Uh, Elden Ring, I popped in a little bit with my friend just to try out the new Coliseum stuff. It's PvP. I mean, it, it's really not Yay. that much. Like, it, how, is just it, like, how is it How is it different from just the duels that currently happen where somebody comes into your world and you all go like, okay, let's um, do the so duel etiquette? They're timed and you basically, you respawn. Um, and you can try oh. again. You can... You can 
um, play co-op. I think you can play with up to six people at one point. I, I haven't yeah. tried that out yet, but um, it is it is a little bit more nuanced than just throwing you into a coliseum with people. Um, you can specifically get people with using the same password uh, multiplayer system that you have. So if you want to play two on two or four on four with your friends or whatever, you can set that up. Um, it's fine. I mean, I, I was not the biggest fan of the PvP in Elden Ring. I, I much preferred playing against the computer and the, and the AI components. Um, so it was cool. I mean, I'm glad that the, the Coliseums do something now rather than just being there and being like, oh, I wish I could go in this thing. Um, yeah. I, I can appreciate it for the fact that some people have really, really nuanced builds that yeah. are so purpose built that I'm like, I would never even think to use it that way. And it's honestly kind of cool being beat by someone like that, who just not just outclasses you, but like out, out thinks how you would ever think to use a specific item or something like that um mm -hmm. and i it's so stupid but it's the most polite community i've ever met because one no one talks <laughs> but you're constantly just bowing to each other and like emoting to each other so i don't know it, it doesn't feel bad losing um and winning is i don't know it's it's nice so i mean it's not like they added like I never consider that sort of stuff like DLC DLC because it doesn't yeah. add anything to the story or, or change the world that much. It was just a nice little add on, but I, I had fun for the two hours that I played with my friend. Um, and then the big one, big one, I have started playing mass effect Andromeda. I would, I would say why, but about three weeks ago, I was like, man, what if I played Andromeda? <laughs> like, I know it's bad, but what if I did it? <laughs> so I, as you all know, and I've you know said multiple times on this podcast, I love Mass Effect. I I it was one First of the foundational one of the foundational. In case you didn't know, one of the foundational trilogies of like my teenage years and and growing up, stuck with it through college. It's great. Never ever touched Andromeda because of just the the shit show that happened when it launched. Um, and I figured, how bad can it be for seven dollars when I when I got it. Oh a year Wait. ago and never played it <laughs> oh okay you bought it because i was about to say it's part of game pass now yeah I, I, I bought it yeah. before i i think i i had game pass okay. or whatever it, it was it was like six or seven dollars on steam i was like why not um so i bought it downloaded it i will say it looks really good that frostbite yeah. engine or whatever like the 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 vistas of the the planets and stuff look really good i'm only like a couple hours into it so i'm really i haven't seen everything but that's where the praise kind of stops because I can't even like walk right. Like you just kind of like do this weird walking thing that I thought they would have fixed. But like, if you turn, if you turn too much, you literally go like that. <laughs> and it, it your, your character just like does that. Um, the facial animations still do not look great. The uh, dialogue is actually terrible. Like, <laughs> I'm I'm not the world's greatest script writer or or dialogue writer, and I know I would be like I'm gonna cut that joke because that's just <laughs> it's just not it's just not gonna work there. Um, it's oh my gosh the, the comparing and contrasting how Mass Effect One starts with how Andromeda starts is like it's it's Mass Effect One is so much simpler. It's it's such a straightforward story, and this is like. Oh, you're the Pathfinder, but you also have a twin, but you're also not the Pathfinder because your dad's the Pathfinder. And then, Ugh. like, we're introducing all these things, and it's like, you were supposed to be here at this one point, but something happened, and it's it's just, like, inundating you with with story stuff and exposition. And it it literally throws you into, like, your first combat experience, and it it it's weird it's weird that Mass Effect kind of does the same thing, but because Mass Effect 1's combat was so, like, bare bones at, at the beginning, it was like, oh, this is, it was almost like, this is cute. Like, this is not, yeah. like, actual combat. Andromeda's combat is, like, it's, like, punchy, and it, it, it just, I don't know, it's something about it just didn't parallel right with the story, and I, I'm not enjoying it. It's not fun to play. I'm really struggling to to want to turn back and, and keep going, so <laughs> Man, I don't like, know. Like, like, between that and fuck, what's the, what's the game? The Anthem. Uh, Anthem. Between oh, yeah. that and Anthem and the divisive opinion about where Dragon Age went, like, Bioware... It's not a matter of them digging themselves out of a hole. It's like 
I'm not sure I trust them with this Mass Effect reboot. Yeah. So I, I, I want to um, be excited. I am excited, but also like they they're fucking it up for the last ten years. So do, do we know when they started working on this new Mass Effect? Like proper, like when they started developing yeah, or yeah, writing yeah. or anything. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> Uh, I don't um, actually know. Probably around when they... But didn't they announce it and do job postings like everyone does now? Yeah. I, uh, I would yeah. say probably pre-production like two years ago. Yeah. When okay. they realized Anthem was dead. So um, Andromeda had, what, it was a two and a half or three year development cycle? It was pretty short for, sure. for, for like a smaller, newer studio. Off of Anthem, right? Yeah. But Anthem had a longer one. So don't give them excuses. I see where you're going. And, and it had oh, no, I'm just I'm trying to see like is there a chance? Cuz like yeah. I don't think Andromeda don't had a chance. Shit. But <laughs> I mean, if I, I had would... to put a chance on it, my gut feeling there's a there's a 20% chance that this game is uh, is too. is is 8 is an 8 to 10. Yeah. In, in terms of I better than a solid 7. Sure. Would only play Andromeda if I could play day one version. <laughs> no All the bugs and everything. <laughs> I would well, the funny thing is, do you think they actually fixed, out, fixed and patched out most of those bugs? Because yeah. with Cyberpunk, they just haven't. They, you know? they yeah. fixed a lot. I just remember day one quick look with Vinny and I think Alex. And Vinny was like, oh, they gave me a jetpack. That means I can fly through these windows. And he just like goes up, drops through the window, and the entire game just like freezes up. And <laughs> yeah. nothing can work. It's like, why <laughs> give me a jetpack if I have to go in a linear path? Jeez. Um, yeah, it's wild. There's, there's uh, some weird decisions, but not yeah. a fan so far. I'm sorry. Maybe so, things will look better with Pentiment. I really want to play yawn. this. Um, Pentiment is on our game of the year list. We, we just talked about it last week and how I said that that game is too long and I didn't think I was going to finish it because there had been some delay. And then the other night I was I was listening to Giant Bomb's Game of the Year deliberations. And it was like day one, they get three hours in and they're like, we're going to talk about best story moment. They're like, by the way, there's going to be Pentiment spoilers if you care. And I was like, fuck, I do care. So, <laughs> so I paused the podcast and then I went and finished the game. I only had like maybe three, four hours left, which I kind of knew. Um, that game, I, I don't know if we talked about this last week, so I'm just going to say it again. It's a fantastic point, which is that that game is too long and the way that they could very easily shorten it is by literally just having on the map showing you locations that there is something you have not done. Like, oh, there's a person or a conversation or, or an item here you haven't interacted with yet. And then also allowing fast travel so that you can quickly flip to that location. Because, mm. yes, I want to go around. I want to talk to everybody. But there are so many points in that game where I'm like, I need to go around to every location again because I want to make sure I have everything. And I don't know that unless I go around and to every location and there's other times where like you're going from like like abby to like uh the the bayer farm and you're just like that's like 10 screens away so it's gonna take me like two minutes to get there i wish i could just i know exactly where i need to go just take me there um if they did that this game would be like a fucking you know nine out of ten ten out of ten um it's still very good the story is incredible uh i was listening to the fire escape cast and they made a very good point which is that like this game relies heavily on very well wit well written and like three dimensional characters and then very good dialogue around that. You know, in a lot of RPGs, it's like you go to talk to a character and they either give you a stupid quest immediately or they give you a lore dump immediately. But this doesn't feel like that. This feels like you are having conversations with people living in a town and you're slowly learning about their lives. You're slowly learning about who they are. You sit down and have meals with them and you see how they interact with each other and all that. And so you really start to like like have an attachment to each of the characters in this in this little uh, village, and the way that the story goes throughout that game is is fantastic. It's it's just crazy because I should hate that game. The game is everything I hate. It's way too <laughs> slow. There's not enough interactivity. It's too much reading, but because it does all those bad things incredibly well, it's still just an incredible video game. So, uh, Pentiment uh highly highly recommend it's game pass folks go go, yeah. go play it i'm uh i picked it up again this week uh and i was only maybe 15 to 30 minutes into it before and now i think i'm like i'm probably approaching an hour and a half two hours into it now and i like finally got to the abbey and have just been talking to people and i was like oh let me just do the story beat to see if that gets me a little bit more into it 
and I did the story beat and like I did some scriptorum stuff and returning books and like that really like blew it up where I was just like, oh, I'm learning stuff and also yeah. like seeing the cool display of how they're doing it. So, um, yeah, the game total, the game total is like 15, 16 hours and you could very easily I was doing it in basically like 60 to 90 minute chunks like each each night and just going in and being like i'm gonna sit down like almost like i'm watching a tv show like i'm gonna get my chunk of the story and move on from here so it's it's very very good yeah i think how long to beat has it the main story is 14 hours and then like it takes like people 17 hours to do most stuff i'm really looking forward to it i haven't touched it at all i think once i'm done hitman 3 i'm gonna jump into it because i really yeah hearing you guys talk about it just gets me excited so i i think i think the good news is if you play the first two or three hours you're gonna know if this is a game for you or not Mm -hmm. and and i think that if you give it that two or three hours even if you hate this type of game which i typically do it, it it could sell you on it so so that's kind of my plea to everybody is give this game two hours of time and then from there you can you can walk away if you like cool okay yeah. everyone write that on the box put on yeah. game pass todd uh ian you're gonna talk about this last game yeah so i'm trying to do my game of the year wrap up um i've been looking at our game of the year list you know i'm gonna shout it out real quick what our game of the year nominee list is so so again the point of this is at the end at the sometime in january we're all gonna get together the four of us and uh which is three of us plus jake we're going to sit down and we're going to make a top 10 games of the year and we're going to put them in order. So number one is number one. Number two is number two. So throughout the year. Wait a second. Yes. Number one is number one? Well, number three is number two. Uh, so then. <laughs> <laughs> so throughout the year, we've been putting nominees on the list. The idea being we've all kind of made this like commitment to try and play as many games on this list. Because one of the things that happened last year was, you know, one person plays one game. They come on, they make a passion plea for it, which is great. But the other people haven't played it and we don't know. And then I I really want more of a deeper discussion and debate, which means we got to play the games. Multiple people playing the same game. Um, So anyways, we've been adding to this list. This is not the order. This is honestly kind of in release order, though, because we've been adding it to it throughout the year. Uh, Here we go. We got Nobody Saves the World, Pokemon Arceus, Vampire Survivors, Elden Ring, Gran Turismo 7, Heartspace Shipbreaker, Citizen Sleeper, The Quarry, Cult of the Lamb, Tinykin, The Case of the Golden Idol, Signalis, Pentiment, and Dwarf Fortress Steam. Um, It's a pretty nice list so far. There's 14 games on there. And my my number one fear is that there's going to be some game out there that's incredible that I'm not going to play until next year or the year after. And I'm going to go, son of a bitch. You know, so I've been trying to go back and play these games, you know, like that's why I gave Pentamin a shot. That's why I really wanted to give High on Life a shot. I wanted to see if that was something worth playing. And so I picked up Rogue Legacy 2. I never played the first Rogue Legacy. Rogue Legacy 2 is it's a it's a uh, hardcore rogue clone, um, but it's 2D side scroller. Uh, I'm surprised I didn't get you, Will. Uh, but basically, it's kind of like Dead Cells uh, where you have different runs. You go into a run into a castle and you're doing combat. Um, but the interesting thing about Rogue Legacy is that when you die, you pick your heir and your heir is one of several different classes. But then they also have weird traits on them. So like uh, I'm trying to think of an example, like one of the guys I picked up, like he had this trait where um, uh, he he could fart. And so, so you go around and he had this little attack. It was this fart attack and it would like blast him in the air and this little poison cloud would puff up underneath him. Um, I had another one where they had like a triple jump or something. So even though it was like a fat, heavy character, because they had the trait triple jump, I could get up higher. So every run you're trying to get a little bit farther and you're collecting gold. But then when you come back to your base, you're using the gold to unlock permanent upgrades and updates. So you can unlock new classes that will show up. You can unlock new stores to buy stuff from. Um, you can unlock and purchase like, Hey, I found this, I found a blueprint for this leather armor in the castle. Now I have enough money. I'm going to pay for the leather armor. So now I have a permanent better armor every time I play. So it does a really good job of like, you know, roguelike games. I think the number one things that suck about roguelike games is when they're, they're like fresh start, nothing carries over. Fuck you. Start over buddy. And it's like, no, fuck you, man. I just played like 
I just did a run that took me like 20 minutes or in the worst case, like returnal, like a two hour run. And you're going to not let me like carry any of that progress over. Like Go fuck yourself. Whereas Rogue Legacy is like, hey, you go in that castle, you get gold, you die. You come back out with that gold, you purchase a whole bunch of shit and that's going to help you out on the next run. But you got to basically give up. You have to forfeit all the gold that's left over before you do your next run. So your, your, your gold is starting from scratch every time. Um, and it's just really fun. Like it's like, you can tell this is a really solid sequel because they had, I didn't play the first one, but you can tell that they had like really good gameplay in the first one. And the second one, they're just adding stuff on top. They have a whole section in the settings called house rules. And there's like 12 options in there. And they're all Ooh. like, Hey, how do you, you know, different things you want to play. Like one of the settings that I turned on, cause it started pissing me off is the game. The game is a little zoomed in. It's not quite like dark souls, which is a little zoomed out. So, so, so like enemies take up a decent sized chunk of the screen and the rooms aren't that big. And by default, if you touch an enemy, you take damage. Like even if they're not, even if you're trying to dash through them or even if they're not attacking, if you just touch them. And I was having a problem with that. And one of the house rules was like, don't take damage from touching enemies. And I was like, boom, immediately turn that on. I'm like, yeah, sure. It makes mm. the game easier, but it, it just feels better because now I can dash through an enemy and hit them from behind. I, can, I don't have to worry so much about like jumping over them perfectly because if I accidentally touch their head, I'll take damage, even yeah. though they're just like, you know, some skeleton archer. It's like, why is your head hurting me so much? Because I touched it. Um, so yeah, it's one of those things where they're like, look, we know what the core game is. We've added a whole bunch of mechanics, a whole lot of craziness on top of it. There's uh, a bunch of different classes. I've already found my favorite. It's like the barbarian. He swings like a big axe. Nice. And so in the in the air, you do like normal damage. But if you're if you're on the ground and you swing it, you get a crit every time. So I just like but there's a lot of platforming. So I'll just like run in a level and I'll like jump around and like get my feet on the ground behind somebody and then smack them and they'll like explode. Um it's a lot of fun, a lot of different options. I'm really enjoying it so far. I'm not sure if it's going on the game of the year list, but for just sitting down on the couch for like 90 minutes and just relax into that, mm. it's a lot of fun. I, I love that between like Dead Cells, Rogue Legacy, any other games like that, I'm starting to really enjoy the games, even Hades, where they're just like, look, rogues don't rogues aren't about like obscene difficulty. It's about like progress between runs so that in a run you can get further and further and i really i really like that take on top of the different art styles and mechanics brought to it sure it's it's a roguelike you're, you're saying it's a rogue clone it's clone. just like the original it's just like rogue. um i was just gonna say i appreciate it in a in a world where like accessibility is becoming more popular in games that they're they keep b baby modes in the games for players like you uh it's just i'm really happy about that you never beat Elden Ring, so you <laughs> shut your fucking mouth. I, that's on the holiday. A good transition to the <laughs> holiday activity plans. Um, Can I take over this segue a little bit? Which is to say, for my holidays, we're going to play some games, but we need to talk about are there potential goaties out there that we need to be playing like one of them is pokemon scarlet violet like it gets the performance gets shit on a lot but apparently the gameplay is incredible and there's part of me that's like i feel like i need to play that game i just really don't want to <laughs> yeah i'm not playing that game okay well any other any other potential goatee <laughs> well, misses I, that you I, guys I feel listen, like we need to play is there is there a list of game of the years around the magazine so I, I, the world. Yeah. I I will say I never finished and I need to. I, I really do want to finish Norco, um, which I've I've seen on a few people's end of the year lists. Yeah. Um I I liked what I played a lot, but I just I never went back to it because I got busy, I switched jobs, stuff happened. So um that's definitely one that you know might end up on our game of the year list, maybe if I if I finish it. But um I don't know. I haven't really heard much. Uh, like we, I, we, I feel like we've got a decent spread already. Um, yeah, but. I just, I just have that that fear of like, imagine if none of us played Inscription last year, and then and then we played yeah. it this year, and we were like, how oh, fucking st like, uh, just watching some of the Giant Bomb stuff. One of the things they did was they showed all their, they showed all their winners from previous years, mm. and and like one of them was like. Uh, Middle Earth Shadow of War, which is not a terrible game, but it's also like, really, you couldn't find anything yeah. better than that solid seven. And then like they picked Skyrim and it was like 
look, Skyrim's good, but you're telling me there's not a better like like just going back through it like Tetris effect. It was like, what the fuck are you guys thinking? And so it's one of those things where I'm like, I want to at least like feel confident about our decision where I don't necessarily have to agree with 100 percent. But two, three, five, ten years from now, I want to look back at it and go, yeah, I don't agree with that pick, maybe, but it's a solid pick. I don't want to be like, oh, there was such a much better game that we completely missed. And that's that's my fear. Yeah, I I would agree with that. I think being able to look like I'm I don't think I will ever change my mind that last year's pick should have been inscription. Like no. yes. bar none. Like like I will agree with yeah. that probably to the end of time. So if we can continue doing yeah, that, I want that for feeling. Our games, I want I that think, confidence. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Exactly. Yeah. Um so I, I will you're looking up some of these goatee lists. It's a lot of like fucking like stray Sufi God of War Ragnarok Elden Ring. Sufi? <laughs> Isn't that what it's called? Sifu? Yeah. Sufi. Sufi's pretty good. Every it's time I look up 2020 year, 2022 game of the year, like any way I search it, it's all game awards. Well, um, I know PC Gamer did it. GameSpot did it. Giant oh, Bomb yeah, did it. That's weird. Everything, literally everything comes up as the game awards winners. That's crazy. Oh, oh. I got that SEO unlock. Yeah. Uh, Plague Tale is probably on some of the lists. I'm just searching best video games in 20. Okay, uh, this one. None of did any of us play Tunic. No. I played a little bit of it. I played about an hour of it. The problem that I had with Tunic, and I'm not saying uh, I would highly recommend one of you guys try it out. Problem I had with Tunic is it doesn't really tell you this, but it is like. It is like Dark Souls, where it's like, hey, guess what? Two hits and you're dead. <laughs> and like, you don't get that from the art style until you start playing. You're like, why am I dying all the time? But apparently they went back and they added like a no hit mode where like you just oh. have permanent health. And then the other thing is a lot of that game apparently revolves around revelations in terms of like you play the game like an idiot. And then at the end, they're like, hey, by the way, you could have just done this the whole time. And you're like, whoa, my mind's blown. Oh, that's my favorite book of the Bible. And for me personally, I'm like, OK, that works once or twice. But if your whole game is based around the idea of like, we're just going to hide these mechanics from you until the very end and then treat you like like it's some big revelation. I'm not crazy about that. So it's one of those things where I'm waiting for one of you guys to play Tunic <laughs> and be like, it's 100 percent what you have to do. You have to get past the bump. And then I'll be like, OK, I'll go back to it. I'll turn on like the the no hit mode or whatever. And I'll and I'll Baby play mode, through it. Please. It's no, because I was getting through it, but it was like it was like I don't want to bang my head against this. Yeah, it's not worth it. No, you it's know? like I realized uh, I had to record some stuff in the God of War twenty eighteen, and I was just like I put it on story first, and literally yeah. you throw an axe into an enemy and then pull it out and they're dead. And I'm like, hell yeah! If and when I'm going back to God of War Ragnarok, I'm putting it on that mode and just playing through it. I do not yeah. want a fight. I, this isn't like. The games I, I want to fight in, I don't want to yeah. challenge. The games I want to challenge is in are the ones I like for Factorio, the challenges, like Factorio, Fortress. Elden Ring, Dwarf Fortress, or any Souls game. I like that sort of thing. Like I go to that. Good for games, reason. yeah. So, yeah. Um, uh, the only hey, other one I see on here, I mean, the quarry, one hundred percent. Um, I can't oh, believe God. that's number three on Times List is the quarry. That's um, not that I care yeah, about what time. It's not a game yeah. of the year. It's one of my favorite experiences of the year. <laughs> Um, Disney Dream my Dreamlight Valley I did here was very good. Um, I know, but but part of it is it, is it's just fucking Disney. Is yeah, it Disney Stardew Valley sickos? You know, yeah, Stardew Valley. Um, the one that's on here that I need to finish next week, uh, that I forgot about that could be on the list is Immortality. Yes, yeah. Also on Game Pass. Um, I will I will say. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge I've seen on a couple. It is a great game. It is fantastic. I mean, if you want to put Marco, it on the list, I because I, we can well, put it on there. Yeah, yeah. I, I might because I, I think I'm almost done and I it might go on there because I have not I don't think I've yeah. smiled so much playing a game. Like, it was just fun. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't have any problems with it. I played like 30 minutes of it and I was like I know what this is doing. It's doing yeah. it very well. It's just not for me. Yeah. But if I don't want to make that case understood, I don't think that it, it's even like game of the year, but I just want to be on the list. <laughs> it's a ten, it's a top 10 list and it's yeah. our list. So we can put it anywhere. Yeah. 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 I don't think Callista is going to hit for any of us. St 
Stray. I don't think Stray um, was oh, worth man. it. Case of the Golden Idol. Oh. <laughs> oh. Hard contender. <laughs> I was. Um, uh, look, I I, I want to flirt this idea with you because we got a slow app here, anyways. We've got 14 games on the list. Sounds like there may be some additional on there. We're getting down to crunch time. Part of me says maybe we should each make our short list of three to five just to be like, hey, I'm going to go hard for these games. You guys should really try and play them. But that's a bit of a spoiler because sometimes when we get to the discussion, it's always surprising to see somebody pull some guns out for something you weren't expecting. So it's like I I had the idea, which is I'm which I've done this way before, which is everyone lists out their top 10 and you assign number one is 10 points. Number two is nine points. Rank you list out the top 10s. We send them all to Karen. She tabulates each game's score and puts those in order of a top 10. And then those are the 10 games we discuss. We start to debate. Or, or it's we not use even those are the 10 games. Point. All of the games, because that won't end up being just 10 games. All the games on that yeah. list that order we're in that carries an anonymous weight to it yeah yeah um, like i i would do that but the only caveat is i think we need to do that soon because my concern is i'm looking at this list etc and i'm like is somebody you know really gonna fight for something on here that i need to go back and play like for example case of the golden idol i'll spoil you right now like like that's in my top fucking three easy so y'all motherfuckers better play that game yeah like, so, like I want to say that because I want to have that conversation with Jake and with Kyle, etc. So it's like, yeah. but I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to show my hand right now and be like, this is my number one. I mean, we can figure this out offline, but maybe we do all that, get that tabulated, get the yeah. top 10 sent to all of us. So we all know to at least play those 10 games. All 10, or maybe we just, we could look at it and just say like these five. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think that's not a bad idea. Um, we can figure that out. Yeah, I, um, we got what we got. A couple minutes here. Uh, holiday plans. I've got a week off. I think we all have about a week off, right? Yeah. Uh, no. I, so, I didn't take any week time off because I thought work was going to be busy because of something that was scheduled. And then, deep breath here. People decided to just change plans for no, no valid reason. And I was like, great, I can take a bunch of time off. And then they put other plans in place. So basically, I'm taking off Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So I basically have a six days. Nice. And that's it. I would have loved to take more time off, but work is very stupid right now, and I can't. I hear you. Um, oh, I don't hear you because my job is amazing, and I love everyone I work with. But um, I hear you about taking time off. It sucks uh, and annoying. Um, yeah, my holiday plans, I've got now through the 20 or 22nd now 22nd through the second off so I, i'm nice. i have a list of all the things i want to do which is work on a video and then play a bunch number two on here is beat elden ring <laughs> which number <laughs> number 2a should probably be learn how to play elden ring again. i was about to say i <laughs> and hope then that takes you forever should be beat elden ring because um, you're you're at the final boss right <laughs> at the final boss so yeah I think I'm going to walk up to the door, summon two people, go through the door, and just have them help me. <laughs> I don't feel like reading. I, another game I do have on here, which uh, shouldn't be on here, but I'm afraid it's the game that is going to make me not play any of the other games on this list, which is Demon's Souls Remake on the <laughs> PS5, uh, which is just a terrible idea. Um, I have some stream plans. I Card stream plan. Uh, folks, I picked these up. Uh, oh no! And no one at home can see this, but these guardian cards are like stupid, silly fantasy cards to the point that this other uh, booster pack I bought while drunk uh, has a chili recipe on the back. Nice. Just a Jeez. recipe for chili, um, and I want to make it someday. So there will be some card streams next week, uh, for sure. Um, both of you, holiday plans, gaming related holiday plans. Yeah, I pretty much already said mine. Uh, I'm going to try and catch up on the game of the year list as best I can. Um, I actually really like the idea of consolidating as much as possible, just so that it's totally you don't like more than 10 games, especially if I haven't played like eight of them is daunting. Um, 
but I will I will do whatever the group decides. And then uh, once that's done, I'm going to try and work on this uh, James Bond retrospective future looking thing. So hopefully that'll that'll be pretty fun. Maybe I'll nominate nominate Goldeneye. Nominate. Yeah, nominate Goldeneye. <laughs> um, yeah, but I'm um, I'm really excited to have a week off. Yeah, because work and is smarter. Plans. Um, I you know I'm I I may pick up Pokemon violet scarlet uh because i am in a bit of a pokemon mood but i think honestly the big thing is i got all my pc parts yesterday and today so oh, i started putting nice. that together yes and it's it's weird because it's going to be a slow transition because i'm not completely cannibalizing my current pc so it's it's like a slow transition where i'm like okay i need to figure out everything i got to pull off the current one like obs settings etc 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 and then i'm going to bring the current one up so i think unfortunately that's going to take up most of my holiday t- holiday holiday time, holiday time. <laughs> that yeah, and families oh my goodness <laughs> Sorry, the, the picture that just came up on stream is <laughs> very <laughs> wow whoa haba <laughs> baba um oh, so between like like i think I think my PC stuff is going to end up taking most of my my holiday time, but maybe I should just go. Oh, you know what? I just realized it was on my gift list, so maybe somebody just got it for me, anyways. I hope so. You know what's on my gift list that I actually unfortunately know no one has bought for me? Luigi's Mansion Three. Um, Are you cheating? Because like, if I go to my Amazon wish list now, it will tell me what's not available anymore. Right? I'm not cheating. I had Karen check because Luigi's Mansion Three was on sale somewhere else. And uh, I wanted to pick it up on sale, but it turns out I misheard her, and it was only ten dollars off. And I was like, eh, "It's not worth it." I cheated uh, by accident because I Grand- added something to my cart, but oh. and I shouldn't have. Oh, Gran okay. Turismo Seven is on that list, though, Ian. So God, that game is great. That game is very I, um, good. I forgot to pick it up for cheap because I was on a flight to Israel, uh, and I was pissed because you had sent me something for it was like fourteen bucks. But I'll wait yeah. for 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 greatness. I'll wait. Um, God, for the game of the year, so I'll wait. I'll wait. I'm honest. Um, I'm like legit upset that my copy it was with you and then with Jake because watching you play during extra, I'm like, fuck. I want to play some more Grand Turismo there's, Seven. Oh, there's this great um, whippy turn chicane. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Um. Anyways, when I the exit one fifty nine to Clifton, which is how I get to my house from places. Um, how do you, you go through the, the easy way. pass go through the easy pass toll and then you like do a back and forth through it and i always maximize it and i'm like yeah, yeah. You're like, uh, hit the apex that's what i was talking about and see oh, now you so finally good. understand i kept saying over and over again that gran turismo teaches you about real life fucking yes, driving it really which is does insane. it's true i hit it's those cars hard and the guy yeah. guys behind me is like whoa that guy's oh so cool god. it's Ford he focus. carries so much speed oh my god <laughs> I'm um, so excited to pay Easy Pass. I love it. <laughs> I, I want to complain about this. At the end of that, it it's a one way, and it leads to two lanes: a lane for turning right and a lane for turning left. And nine times out of ten, the person in front of me pulls into the right lane to turn left. And I'm like, classic Jersey. No, this is not how this yeah. works. Uh, anyways, let me play the outro music, and we can get out of here. I did not change it to the long version, so folks, we've got thirty seconds. Um, thank you everyone for listening uh, to this local chat this week uh, you can find us subpixelfilms.com brings you to our link tree you can find me on twitter at hunt270 you can find Ian who is not below me anymore on twitter at think Gibson. and you can find oh you can see everything down there you can find Kyle on twitter at Kyle of the beard uh, thank you we'll be back tomorrow at some point with some delicious dwarf Fortress, man, that really just ends. <laughs> Delicious Cuts orders. off, wow. <laughs> so, sorry about that. I gotta put the 60 second one in there. We're not I'm even live talker. anymore. <laughs> We're not even live! Uh, <laughs> folks, thanks so much for watching. Have a Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and Happy Kwanzaa. Um, we'll see y'all. Bye. Bye.